Hello and welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Game Asset Optimization 101. Here we have the vehicle model that I downloaded. And what we're going to be taking a look at is professionally as a 3D designer and 3D modeler um, and texturing artist, how is this thing really working and is it performant for rendering an object in real time? And the quick answer is no. And second off, it has a lot of extra problems, which we'll discuss al along when we're um, uncovering the secrets of this little model. There's nothing wrong with this model, by the way. I mean, if someone just uploaded it as free model and they wanted just to shade it and with a given amount of colors, there's nothing wrong with using this procedure we're going to talk about. You can already see um, what's wrong with the model at, at the first glance, right? The model really looks pretty good. But if you take a look at the right, we have a little bit of the inspector variables of the of the model in Unity. And what we can see here is that when we are sampling the model, the model pretty much comes with nine materials to shade the object with flat colors. What we want to do with this is we want to pretty much uh, make sure that the vehicle is totally, uh, totally well optimized for game development. So since we've downloaded this thing on the internet, we don't even know whether this thing is optimized or not. And you can clearly see here now that we have um, eight different materials, um, nine really pretty much. And I think one of them or two of them are kind of repeated or could be shared with the same material. But you can clearly see that this is not kind of the best way we could go because when you're rendering in real time, every material that's on your object will take one step to render that object per se that's the simplest way i can put it so if if an object has eight materials it will take eight steps one per material to render such object so the more materials you can see the more complex the rendering of this object will become let's go ahead and show you what is wrong with the vehicle how we can combine all of these materials into one single material why this is not the best choice if you have transparencies. And third off, we're going to cover as well to make sure UVs are properly placed and properly um, laid out in the modeling software. If you've ever modeled, you know about Blender. And if you don't, well, this is a little quick tip for you so you can learn how to use it. Okay, we have our model, which looks really good. And well, first problems as a professional designer, you can see is that um, while some of the materials did not load properly, which I guess uh, the object was shaded already this way, or it's something I don't understand exactly. And here, and we have everything properly named. Now, second off, the wheel should be parented inside of the car, which will inevitably help us um, move the vehicle and have the wheels attached to it. Third off, the materials. So first off, the person who made this object did not name the materials. Let's go into shading, shading here. So what we know is that we do not want to have an object with eight different materials, okay? We need to take a look at the UVs of the object because they may not be properly uh, placed on the UV map. Let's go into UV editing. And as you can see, as soon as I went into UV editing, let's select everything. Okay, now it's, it's now, now we're just taking a look at the body, but you can already clearly see a big problem with this UV map. Uh, and if you notice that, it's because everything is overlapping and this is not going to be good for lightning calculations or pretty much anything that, that has to do with uh, shading the object with a given texture. I think it's pretty clear why this is not the best way of UV mapping this thing. So the easiest thing you can do without doing much magic, you just select everything in the UV maps here. You can see the wheels are really massive things compared to what the body of the vehicle really is. So what this means is that not all the UVs in the object have the same uh, 3D size in terms of the space they occupy in the texture and the space they occupy in the actual model, right, in the 3D space. So we need to optimize for that and make it all the UVs uniform in the same space. You need to first uh, seams from islands because this will um, show you the UVs that someone cut. And as you can see, they are properly cut. They are properly made. They are properly, you know, someone took the time to cut them. And that's great. Like, 
it's great. Someone caught the UVs and they are there, but they are not well distributed on the UV map. UV, first off, unwrap, unwrap angle based, which is probably the reason this thing was not properly UV mapped. So whoever did this um, caught the UVs, but did not um, arrange them or unfolded them, which is kind of problematic as well. I think this happens as well with the wheels. So let's go ahead again with the wheels. And now with all the wheels here, let's go and unfold them. UV, unwrap, unwrap angle based. Okay, that's great. Now that we have everything properly sort of uh, unwrapped and, and looking like it has uh, relatively good UVs, what should we do? It's select everything. Okay, let's go out from this object mode. Let's select everything. Let's go into this object mode. And now that we have all the UVs which are have been unfolded and that have been properly uh, laid out, let's go and grab something and let's average the island scale now. It's when we're going to make sure all the UVs of this object share the same 3D space. And you can see now the wheels are no longer just humongous uh, objects compared to, um, I don't know, the windshield or, or, you know, any other part of the object. Now you can see they are not shaped and occupying correctly the size of the UVs, so we need to um, shrink them, them down a little bit maybe and play around with this thing. So I can maybe shrink them down up to a size that I know it's going to be able to fit, kind of, right? And ask them to rearrange it. So yeah, now we only need to go shrinking it slightly every little bit until we can confidently say that we are occupying the highest possible amount of UV space. Just that little more, and I believe we could we could pack it. If, if the packing works well, we could pack it. Now, let's go ahead and click Pack Islands again. Okay. Pack them. Woo! We are really close. We are really close, and and even though we are really close, we could just scroll. We have made sure as well that all the UBs are occupying the same 3D space, which is, again, something good professionally for whenever you want to shade anything with your object. And as you can see, everything shares the same space in 3D. So the wheel is um, the size of the wheel here and it's not bigger than the windshield or something else, right? Which is really the, the important deal when doing this. Okay, now that we have finally um, properly mapped the UVs of this object, the next step pretty much comes down to baking uh, the current model uh, materials into a single texture. If we go into shading, I believe shading, yes. In order to bake it, we need to create a, a texture, right? Here you have a little bit of a space for the textures that you're going to be seeing. So first off, let's create a new node. Okay, texture, and we create an image texture. You place it wherever you want, and you make sure you have it selected. You need to select it in each of the materials, by the way, okay? Since we have nine materials, I'm going to stay here for quite a while, <laughs> just making new textures. The thing is that once you create a new texture, just make sure that you create a new kind of uh, material or texture for this object. Let's make sure that the texture is for 96 and for 96. With that, we have a 4K texture, and we will write down the alpha as well, so we can show you a lot of things about this, this texture, okay? So we create this new image. It's untitled, but let's call it base color. And that's what's going to basically bake in this texture, the base color. Now, if we take a look at base color here, please, yep, base color. That's our base color. It's a black texture right now. Wonderful, we already have a texture to write on. So now the next thing is just to copy this node and paste it in all the materials you have in your object, okay? Let's go here, let's copy this one, and let's go here and let's paste it, okay. And again, we repeat the process for each one of the materials in our object. 
now that we have all the materials with the base color referenced, um, we could literally just try and bake it. Now, in order to bake the texture, we need to go into render. So we go to render and instead of EV, we choose cycles. Once we've got into cycles, we can go into um, bake. You see this? Bring it up. So what we're going to be doing is make a bake of diffuse because we only want the color of the materials big kind of texture. So we do not want the direct or indirect lightning, we only want the color contribution and of course this is the important thing. We want to write into an image texture that's this one, right? Sampled into these materials. Check out again that they are selected because that's important in all of the materials by the way. If not, that's not going to work. Third off, you have everything kind of ready. Now you just need to make sure that clear image is on and hit bake. But by the way, let's do it with GPU compute, which is faster, I believe. Do we bake it? Let's see, let's see what baking gives us, okay? No problems, it's directly baking the texture, so that's good news. Um, no material has not received the texture for baking, so that's pretty much nice. Let's wait until we have the texture. We have finally finished the baking of this texture, and as you can see, um, we have all the important aspects of the texture baked on this uh, material. I don't know whether the wheels are baked or not. I believe they are not, because they only baked <laughs> the vehicle. Oh, as you can see, the wheels did not have this thing. Okay. So let's go in the car, let's select this thing, copy, let's go into the wheels, let's go into the materials, and let's do the same we did for the car, but for the wheels, let's probably, we're probably going to cut this. Yep, this one, this does not have it, so we need to bake this one as well. Select it, select it, select it, and in all the car is, everything is selected. So yeah, we can totally try to bake this. Um, we only take up to 24 samples per pixels, so it takes way less time to to sample this. And it still has the same quality because it's a diffuse texture, pretty much. Let's grab the object, the car, all the wheels. Let's go shifty, duplicate it, leave it here. Um, so now that we have this car with all these wheels, let's go ahead and, and... So this car, I think I can remove all the materials it has until we are left with only one. And we can... Create a new material and call it car material. And this car material, we can go back into shading. And we can actually now paste this base color texture here and assign it as the base color for this. And look at that. We have the same car we had before, but now it's only one material. You have the wheels. Well, the wheels, I, I haven't chosen the wheels yet. But if you want to do this with the wheels, you would rather need to do the same material, okay? Now, this is the object that should kind of have everything properly shaped. Now, let's reopen this one. Again, if you're baking, you need to select the wheels as well and everything in the object so it's baked and as well needs to have this kind of texture assigned. So once you have this, Technically, we should go again to render and be able to bake the texture. We should be able to bake the wheels and everything into the texture. And let's go bake denoise. Do not want to denoiser? Please uh, put some noise threshold so we don't um, spend here of millennia baking a diffuse texture. So now. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, now it's taking the time to bake the wheels as well. Wonderful. You see, it will take four, four samples extras for each of the objects, which is the car and each one of the wheels. You'll see how now the wheels are starting to appear here. See this? This is a wheel. Now we're totally sampling everything. Now, all the wheels have been sampled. And if we go 
into our optimized object. Oops. Please. Now we go to our, and there it is. It's an object sampled only with um, one material. And it's uh, looking exactly the same as the other car. Let's put them side by side. Okay, so you can pretty much see that they look pretty much or practically the same. And here you go. That's how you optimize a vehicle. So this vehicle has eight materials. And this vehicle only has one. And it looks exactly the same. Everything is looking um, pinpoint as if it was. But with one material, one diffuse texture. And this is eight times cheaper to sample. Always analyze whether the asset is properly usable for it. And we can do the same for any channel. If you want to render, for example, instead of the diffuse, you want to render the metallics, you would do exactly the same. You would just simply grab, um, well, you would grab this and you would basically call, um, I want to bake the normals. Uh, I want to bake, um, I don't know, the glossy. I, I want to bake, I don't know, the, 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 the transmission, right? Which is something that you need to understand. If an object does not need to have multiple materials, just like this one, which actually you can see that the object needs to have multiple materials, and I'm going to name this Y. This object does have this transparency, and we can actually see the interior, and it's quite wonderful, really. What I did was, um, let's take a look at this channel, okay, this texture, let's take a look at it. Because in the alpha channel, you can see that I've written all the alpha values of this of this object. So theoretic theoretically, if I set this object to be alpha transparent, um, only the things which are kind of like this or like that, a little gray, will have a little bit uh, of transparency. Whatever is white will be fully opaque. What happens with this if you have only one single object that's that's handling its own transparencies per se? It's greatly problematic because of how transparent rendering works. Now you see a lot of sorting issues happening with transparency. First off, why are these issues happening? Transparency is rendered usually back to front to keep everything rendered correctly. So if the entire object is transparent, even if it has opaque masks and opaque textures, it's still going to try and render back to front. How do we fix this? Well, the solution is really simple. You go back into your modeling software, you assign windshield material or a glass material to the parts that are going to be glass. So therefore you will have, instead of one, you will have two materials. So we went from a car that was having eight materials to a car that had only one material and could not properly sort or render transparency. And now we have a car which has the opaque texture and the transparency texture that allows us to pretty much render transparency. So yeah, this is the solution to everything. Just have two materials in your object, one that is the, the material you want and one is always for the glass, which is the cheapest way to, to make this car look the best really important do not shade your object with multiple materials if it doesn't need to because you're eating a lot of performance just for one single object have a wonderful day and see you soon